Now, as we get to verse 2, Paul shifts from his initial question to a line of questioning that would reveal exactly how foolish it is to add to what the Messiah has accomplished. And he does so by building on the first question, which really reveals the fact that everything he's talking about really boils down to one issue in particular. How are we declared righteous before a holy God? He does so by saying, all I want to learn from you is this. How did you receive the Spirit of God? How are you being perfected? And how has God accomplished his work in and among you? And he presents these questions in such a way that only a foolish person would answer the wrong way. He's basically saying, if not by hearing with faith, all of their suffering is in vain because in the end of the day, to come before God clothed in our own righteousness, we will all stand condemned. Also notice the structure of these verses. When you look at the proper response, you see it in verse 2 and then when we get to verse 5, Paul is framing these questions with the correct answer by hearing with faith. So you can say justification before a holy God begins and ends with simply taking God at his word. But let's go deeper into the text. Verse 2, notice what Paul does not say. By the works of the law or by the sinner's prayer. By the works of the law or by joining your local church. Or the works of the law or as imitators of Israel. He says something that takes far more humility than all of that. Have you received the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Now, does this mean that we literally do nothing? Or that faith is somehow this intangible, abstract idea? The Greek lambano, or English receive, is a second-person verb. It is also indicative, meaning it's a fact concerning something that actually took place. The Galatians have received the Spirit of God. But what Paul is asking is, how exactly did you take hold of the Spirit? How did you acquire, how did you expect, accept the Spirit? This is not a passive receiving or something that God does apart from human interaction. Rather, this is a working within the Galatians, empowering them to actually do something. And notice the connection here to the dilemma spoken of in the first verse. Paul displays an equal concern for their receiving the Son of God to their receiving the Spirit of God. Why is this the case? Because you can't have one without the other, right? It's typical for us to recognize the work of the Spirit far later than the moment that we first believed. But it's a fact that you can never turn to faith in Christ apart from the work of the Spirit. As Sinclair Ferguson says, the Spirit is the executive of the saving activity of God. He is the irresistible power of God. He's the means by which we come to know Jesus as Savior and also the means by which we receive the grace of God. 